Hey, this is Jeannie at Richland Sewing Center. It's Tuesday. Jane is over here folding Kimberbell kits, and we want to remind everybody, Kimberbell Club meets next Monday, the 14th. It is a sew-in to make a wall hanging with a little house, and it's really cute, and she's putting all the kits in bags right now. If you're in Kimberbell Club, you can come that day and pick up your designs with your USB stick, or then you can come um, on the weekend and do that. So we wanted to let you know that. Uh, a couple other announcements. Um, Doug is doing good so far. Um, I picked him up about 3.30, no, I guess it was about 4 o'clock yesterday, and he's got a plastic shield over his eye, and um, I think he was frustrated because he thought he was going to have perfect vision as soon as he walked out of that building, and of course he doesn't, and then I took him back to the regular eye doctor this morning to do the check, and everything was fine and he was starting to feel a bit better. They dilate their eyes and it stays dilated for a long time. So he hasn't, his dilation is not back to normal yet. So thank you all um, for thinking about him. We had a not, lot of nice comments from you all yesterday. I also wanna add, I know a lot of you know my mother-in-law, which is Doug's mother, Helen, um, and she is undergoing some tests for having, and she's, she's fell a couple weeks ago and she's had some concerns with her tummy, so we would appreciate your prayers for her. I know a lot of you know her. She worked in the store for many years and has been retired for quite a while now, but she still loves to sew and keep in touch with everybody, so um, I would appreciate that. BJ has an announcement. He wanted me to let you know that he's hungry. <laughs> um, it's been crazy busy here, so um, he is gluten-free, so if you have any gluten-free snacks, you can drop those off. No, I'm just kidding, but he really did tell me to say that. Um, what we're going to talk about today, I'm sorry, I'm falling off my, this chair is slippery, and when I sit down on it, I just seem to fall. We're going to talk a little bit about towels today, because we're getting to that time in December where you may need um, some hostess gifts. Maybe you're going somewhere for um, a Christmas get together, although I know a lot of the Christmas get togethers are gonna be a lot smaller and a lot different than what we're used to. Maybe you're mailing someone something. And if you're like me, if I give somebody something that I purchased as opposed to something that I made, they're almost upset with me about that. So sometimes we just need to do some small things to either have on hand or to give to people, um, even your neighbors. Uh, a lot of times a mug rug with a mug and maybe a coffee mix or some tea bags or something like that makes a really nice present. But one of my favorite things to do is a towel. And you can do so many different things with a towel. And I'm talking about a kitchen towel, um, although bath towels are great too. But what I'm talking about right now is kitchen towels. So I'm gonna show you some of our towelings, and then some things that you can do with the towels to make them a little bit more special. We do sell towelings by the yard. They come like this, and it generally takes 27 inches, which is three-fourths of a yard, is the amount you need to purchase to make a towel. This one is perfect for Christmas because it's red and it's pretty, and I actually have a table runner uh, made out of this hanging here in the fabric department. Maybe I'll go show you that in a second. And I have a really pretty reindeer that I did on both ends and then I just turned the ends under into a point and it made a really pretty um, runner. So I'll show you that in a minute. And then this is another, we have a bunch of them, I'm not showing you all of them, but this is a little bit more neutral in color, not necessarily Christmas, but plenty of room on here to put a design. This is another one. This is more of a, of a textured, like a rough nubby texture. Um, they are all cotton, by the way, but it's got a nice texture to it. This is one I would be a little concerned about it shrinking. So if you think you or somebody else is gonna actually use it as a towel, sometimes it's better to pre-wash these and let them shrink before you do your decoration on them. And then we have one, I'm laying these over here. We have one that is definitely Christmas. This has Santas on both ends. It would be hard to kind of add too much decoration to this, although you could do an applique or an embroidery in the middle if it was something that was pretty bold. And there are a lot of things that have like a solid background and then a design in the middle. Maybe they're done like a medallion, and that would be good on something like this. But all of the towelings, and then the other one we have that we sell quite a bit of, this is called Huck Toweling. It's just wide, white, it's not as wide, I said that totally backwards. It's not quite as wide as some of the other ones. This is also one that if it's kind of got a lot of body to it right now, 
but if you think somebody's going to wash it, this one shrinks too. So it's a good idea to pre-wash this and then press it and starch it before you do whatever you want to do on the end of it. But then you have to decide, what am I going to do to the end? Now, you could just turn it under and hem it, but that would be boring because obviously we're sewers, so we could do something a little bit better than that. I'm going to show you some of the options, and then I'm going to demo the one that's actually the easiest. This is one thing that I think is fun, and I apologize for the Halloween and stuff, but I was pulling some towels out to show you. This is a prairie point finish. I love prairie points. And you can see on the back, this is where the finished edge of the prairie point is. They're turned under, so there's no raw edges. And then on the front, there's the prairie points at the bottom of the towel. And it's kind of fun to do two colors, I think. Um, and there is a way to make something called continuous prairie points so that you don't have to do individual prairie points. You can make them all in a row. And if any of you need help with that, I can show that or I might show it on a live if anybody would like to see it. It's really a neat technique. And then I also added some Rick Rack on that just because that makes it extra special. And that was one that we did for Halloween. This one was also a fall one. This one has the ruffle. And we put ruffles on quite a few towels. I think I have another one here with a ruffle. When you do a ruffle, you need to do something to cover the top of the ruffle uh, because that's a raw edge. And most of the time when we do a ruffle to add to a towel, we either run it through a serger, because you know that does a great job, or we run it through the ruffler attachment, which also does a great job. If it's a double fold, which is, remember this is the right side of the fabric and the fabric is folded in half. So it's two layers at the top. You get a better ruffle going through the ruffler when you have those two layers. Now we don't want that ugliness to show back here. So notice we have a band of fabric sewn over the top of the ruffle. And that just adds another piece of color. That actually was the same fabric that was part of the applique design on this one. So the ruffle makes a neat finish. There's another ruffle here. I have a pile here, so bear with me. This is another one that has a ruffle. This is a single ruffle. And what I mean by that is this is a single layer of fabric. So this went through and um, with the little ruffle foot, Personally, what I usually do is run it through the serger on a rolled hem, and that works out great. If you use that sulky cotton, you may be careful about using woolly nylon because if somebody did actually iron this, um, the woolly nylon might melt, but this is a little tiny hem on this, and we have a little binder foot that you can use on your machine, which will put that little, we call it a shirt tail hem, on there, or you could run it through the serger, and then this gathers beautifully on the serger also. And then notice the ribbon, has added to cover the top raw edge of that ruffle. Isn't that cute on there? So that's one finish. This one is a little more elaborate, but I wanted to show it to you. This is an embroidery design. It's actually two. One is the snowman. Well, actually they're both snowmen. They're just two different colors. It's the same design. This is an Anita Good design, and you actually embroider this right onto the bottom edge of the towel. Isn't that pretty? But it does take a while to do this. I taught a class on this, um, and as simple as that design is, it does take a while, but it is still available. It's called Seasonal Scarf Ends, um, and I think they're so cute, you know, the way they're on there like that. And then the simplest one is to put a band on the bottom. This is our little grun... Our little gnomes, are sorry to call them Grinches. Um, this we have green on, and then we made this a dual purpose towel. So we put Valentine's on the other end, and that has a little red finish. And I want you to see, this is a totally finished towel. There's no raw edges that stick out on this either. So I'm gonna show you real quickly how to do this. My phone just said I'm on low battery. I'm not sure why, so I'm gonna go fast. Uh, here's another one. So this towel is one that came with a hem already in it. So if you wanted, if you got any of the toweling by the yard, you just could turn up two times and you'd have a finished towel just like that. But I think it's more fun. This has an embroidery on it. I'm going to step over here. We do sell finished towels here too. We have the cotton towels in all kinds of solid colors. And these are the art to ha heart towels, which come with the plaid and some stripes and things like that. If you want to add rickrack, I'm talking fast because I'm worried about my phone. Um, you can sew a piece of rickrack. If you pretend that pin is a seam, then when you turn that raw edge down 
look how the little humps of the rickrack stick up, and then you can sew that onto the front of your towel, and it keeps it neat and straight, and it's so neat. Okay, I'm gonna move over here and turn this around just for a second. This is how you would put a band um, on the bottom of a towel. Now, this towel has an applique, and this is the kind of um, embroidery I was talking about if you have a towel that's a print and you wanna make sure it shows. See how that has kind of a, a background around it. Jane, will you hold that just for a minute? And so I'm putting a band on the bottom of the towel. It's kind of like putting a waistband on a garment, if that means anything. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, just come see me. I'm gonna sew the band to the back and then turn it to the front. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, the decision you have to make is do you want the bottom of the towel, and this one has been surged, to be all the way enclosed so the bottom of the towel is actually pretty even with the bottom of your band, or do you want the band to hang down below it and just kind of be hollow? Either way is fine. I prefer to have the band kind of stuck in there. So what I did was I sewed the band in my case, to the back of the towel. And I did, you know, I just brought this up so that this would be inside the fold. So I sewed that band on there and I had already pressed this under about a half inch. So it's sewn on there. And then on the end, I'm gonna show you on this end, I'm gonna fold this back over like that. And this is just like you would do on a waistband for those of you who sew. So now I'm gonna do this and hopefully I'll do straight since I'm trying to go through here. I'm gonna back stitch a couple stitches and come right across here, backstitch a little bit there, and then I will take my scissors and trim this off just a little bit, and then I like to snip out that corner a little bit so it's not so thick. Now I'm gonna turn it, and I meant to grab my point turner, and I didn't grab it, so pretend that this is a point turner. This is a bad thing for me to do. This is a bad thing to do, but I don't have my point turner. So I would push that out so it's real even, tuck that in there, and see I've got both ends turned under. Can you kind of see it? Does it kind of show? And then see, I would pin it. I would press it and pin it. And then I would do a stitch right next to the edge right there. And it doesn't matter if I catch it in the back because I've already sewn the back. Now you could sew it on the front, turn it to the back. It'd be the exactly same thing. But see, the edges are finished. And when you get over here where that little piece is, you could snip that, but you kind of want to tuck that inside so that you have a nice, neat corner right there. And that stitching will be right along the edge there. And it does a great job of finishing the edge of it. Doesn't that look better with that on there? What do you think, Jane? Beautiful. Beautiful. Easy, easy, easy to do. And you could do the same thing on the other end if you have an unfinished towel that you bought the toweling by the yard. But really, if you do something like this on one end and then just hem the other end, if you have a serger, it would be nice if you ran a serger stitch because then you could get away with just turning it up one time and stitching it the better thing to do would be to turn it up twice. So that's totally hidden, don't you think? Yes. What would you do? I would hide it. Jane and I kind of like to hide things. But um, but the serger does take care of that because notice this is also a cotton toweling, you know, and it would have a tendency to get kind of ravelly. Okay, thank you. I'm going to walk over here and show you uh, where I did this runner. This is the runner that I did out of, well, I turned it around, um, that I did out of that toweling. This is the toweling. And then see, I just sewed a seam in the back and then pointed it. And I put the little tassels on the end. And look what a pretty runner that makes. Isn't that cute? And there's a pattern there that shows something real similar to that. I just love that. So we have that pattern also. You could do that with any of the toweling. So they make a quick and easy um, gift. Make a towel. You could even personalize it if you could put Sue's Kitchen or something like that on it. Put a personalization on it. Um, stick a mug rug inside. Stick a pot holder inside. Most people don't actually use the towels. They actually hang them in their kitchen. I have a whole row of them across my oven door um, because I love them. Most of mine are kind of Western, except at the holidays, and I do put the holiday ones out. So I hope you'll try that. Um, if any of you want to see the, the continuous prairie point technique, I will be happy to demonstrate that if you would like to see it. But you have to tell me. Remember, you have to make a comment. I need your comments. What we're going to do tomorrow and the next day, we're going to be counting stockings. So we're going to 
to get all our stockings and spread them out over in the annex and take care of getting those to Meals on Wheels. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of y'all for doing what you did. And we will get those down to Meals on Wheels this week. Okay? Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to comment and share. We love your comments. We never know you're out there. Okay? Thanks a bunch, y'all. Have a blessed day.